Okay. Um, so the government granted will do whatever it is they can in terms of PR to get themselves looking better and Kenyans perceiving them better. Uh, but does the media sometimes get roped in and forget the sifting part and uh, also then become the medium of saying, yes, it is the government, private citizen and the likes. <laughs> Remember last time? <laughs> I, I, I think I think what's happening here is uh, it's the media that is doing the PR for the government yeah. inadvertently uh, or probably knowingly because uh, we get so enamored uh, by whatever the government does and I've always maintained that uh, in the case of the government when it starts to do something it's it's guilty until it proves itself in, itself innocent mm -hmm. but what happens is that no matter whatever it is that the government does we get so involved in it so much that actually passionate. it does one passionately it does one thing and then we do the rest so i don't think the government is actually investing so much in pr and all these things that people keep on saying that oh mr kenyatta is a man of the people is tech savvy and all that i mean it's, this is the age of cell phones. This is the age. What are you expecting to do? To start, to start using, to start, I mean, making calls on the landline? <laughs> or you want him to do things the way they're being done 70 or 50? This is, he's just using what is available. And I think it's us who actually are seeing this to be s such a novelty, you see. Okay. And most of our reporters also, Actually, probably they never grew up during maybe Mr. Moy's time or maybe they are maturing during Kibaki's time. I mean, he, when Mr. Moy started all these things, I mean, he used to go out there and build gabions. He was all over the place in a short-sleeved shirt. Mm. I mean, throwing stones, building all these soil erosion things. And I think they need to look back at that. So mm -hmm. all these things that somebody going to Kibera, so, so what? I mean... He's the president of this country, should be able to go anywhere else. So what's a big deal? All right, John. I think um, to an extent, yes, we have been over enamored with, uh, with the persona of uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, for both for reasons that, that would justify it, but I think we take it a bit too far. Mm -hmm. um, yes, Clay, mm -hmm. we, we do live in an age <laughs> yeah. where, where mobile phones are really ordinary, and iPads and, and, and the like, and if you look internationally, all presidents use them. But for Kenya, it's a novelty because the person preceding Uhuru Kenyatta had a thick stack of papers that he would carry around and read his speech and not deviate from so it. So, it, just with me, respect just to, to that, just that, let me yeah. just tell you one thing. Even when, one thing people don't know, even Mr. Kibaki was in the opposition. Mm -hmm. He never had a mobile phone. That's mm -hmm. one thing people don't know. You could not call Kibaki on a mobile phone. It would... He never had... Nobody had Kibaki's number like this is his personal number. Mm -hmm. So that one is... That has been there. So you did not expect him anyway. Okay. Yeah, but to the extent that to the extent that Kibaki was a was was a president and he presented himself as this old style a president who would read his speeches and not deviate, then that that is a novelty. But it should have worn off, like I think, within the first <laughs> ten days. Of, after what? Of, <laughs> yeah. After, <laughs> after that, I think I think it should have worn off. And yeah. and and um, and yes, to an extent, we we are um, enabling. What is, a, what is, I think, a very big PR juggernaut, actually, that, that the president operates. It is in the interest of every government to look good to its people. Sure. So in that respect, I don't think the government is, the president rather, is doing anything that, um, that other people wouldn't do. Correct. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it, we just need to be a, a bit more critical, a bit more analytical about what exactly he is. The sign of um, that, that Asha... Um, uh, did for that piece yeah, is, yeah. is very important in respect that it raises one crucial question. After the glitz, the glamour, the smoke and the mirrors, is there food on my table? Is it cheaper? Can I get to work um, more efficiently? Yeah, you remember last, was it last week? Um, when uh, the, the ban on 14-seater uh, matatus was lifted? Mm. Um, I mean, I'm part of the press corps, mm. but... Uh, was a discussion around why it was put there in the that's first place. That's a policy that's been reversed. You understand? Yeah. In, uh, in one <laughs> fell swoop. Yeah. So what are the implications of that, for instance? That is really symptomatic of how uncritical we can be at times. There are times when we do step up to the plate, but it's not often There are times we just report, yeah. he lifted, he lifted. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's a sorry state we are getting into. Uh, it's, it's hoopla, hoopla, hoopla. And um, the end result is we hear even the president crying to us. There are corrupt people in state house. Oh, if yeah. they are tired of working, <laughs> they should go. They should go. They should go. Uh,
officers who are killed, we will not turn, uh, leave any stone unturned. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to help because security is a joint venture. Every individual should be involved. Mm -hmm. This is the man we are paying mm -hmm. <laughs> to lead the process. But we're not asking those questions. We entertain him putting on uh, CIC, uh, Commander-in-Chief, uh, a day or two when we are thinking through what went wrong in Westgate. And he says, we will still leave no stone unturned after a year. Yet he told us a few hours after Westgate, he will leave no stone unturned. So when you ask yourself those hard questions, yes, it's good for the president to look nice mm -hmm. because it's only human nature. <laughs> uh, but we need to be able to ask ourselves, um, if, for instance, the president is going to go to Kibera, what is his policy position on slums in the country? As he told us, there will be no slums in 10 years. Uh, so yes, building abolition blocks, toilets and bathrooms in Kibera is a good thing. But what is that telling us? That Kibera is here to stay. So who mm -hmm. is engaging with that discourse mm -hmm. at that level? We, we've, we've had the deputy president saying we will hold accountable criminals. Mm. Yeah? And, and we've seen that. Deaths of police officers in Baragui. <laughs> we've seen deaths of police officers in Capedo. Actually, I think today is the two-year anniversary yes. of Baragui. Yes. And yeah. has the media remembered... It was 10th. Uh, was it the 10th yeah, or the 10th. 12th? Yes. Has media remembered Turbi Massacre, for instance, mm. where Bonaya Godana and Mirugi died? And, and, and people said, including who was in cabinet at that time, that it will never happen again. Okay. Uh, their campaign was very clear. Mm. Kenyans will not die again because of politics. So we need to still so, remind them of what the wrong <laughs> yeah. is. I yeah. want people to get back to bits of substance. Even though we want to show them uh, in the glamour, it, it's necessary. But the media has to sit back and, and, and ask the harder questions. Okay. I would like the president, when he invites journalists for Karibuni chai. <laughs> People must ask a few questions. Oh, we can't, we can't uh, eat and yeah. talk at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> then just uh, talk and uh, don't eat anymore. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I, I think just very quickly before, before Patrick yeah. jumps in, um, and there's, there's another problem that we also need to address here, mm -hmm. that those voices that are critical of the government are being drowned out by this groupthink that makes it okay for whatever the government does to be you know perceived just as is mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that you are opposed to the government or you are uh, you know you're assigned up a member of cord or any other uh, part of the opposition if you choose to look at things critically yes. it only means that you are you are fulfilling your own right as a citizen to ask questions and i think as media we 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 sort of tend to get cowed by this very big voice, perceived yeah. voice, that there is on social media, that there is just generally... Because even here when street. I do interviews, sometimes interviewing politicians, you'll find Paul saying, oh, you, you're a jubilee person, just because you'll put somebody to, or exactly. you're a court person, <laughs> just because you'll push them on a certain point. So I think... Well, we it has ask, nothing to do yeah. with that. I mean, if you're being critical, it is really because there are honest questions that need to be asked and answered. Okay. It doesn't mean that you know, you're, you're going to have chai with Raila, you know, five minutes after asking <laughs> after those that, questions. I, 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 I mean, I agree with a lot that's been said, um, obviously. Hmm. Um, but... <laughs> that's odd, eh? I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the, I think the lack of substance and the media's focus on form as opposed to substance is something mm. that really, really needs to worry us. Um, uh, Example, the president pays, gets uh, a text message for somebody, texts back or calls back, says, I've paid your bill, go pick up the body. The next day, Deshun FM tweets, well, actually, um, Nairobi Women's Hospital has refused to release this body because only a million out of 3.5 million has been paid. Nobody runs that story. Mm -hmm. Nobody questions it. Everybody keeps on saying, yeah, they've been told to go collect. Mm -hmm. You know. 
So where is this substance? You know, the form is yes, he said if a phone call, who actually called Nairobi Women's to find out did he actually do this? Did he actually pay? You know, this is w w what really gets my goat about about our press. You know, they they go to the media to, to the government. Oh, but in all honesty, you did find out about that from the same press, no? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it's treated. Not like you went it was to treated Nairobi by hospital the media. Yourself. You found <laughs> that from the press. Yeah, but I'm saying <laughs> yes, I did. But then where is the follow-up? As in, it's the same thing we we're talking about earlier about mm. this uh, charge thing. Okay. Lots of the follow-up was Betty Bio, you know, and stuff, which is form, you know. Where is the substance? Okay. You know, and this is yeah, what problem. makes you different from a citizen journalist who mm. would have mm. heard that the president was going to pay. Right, mm. you know. There must be a difference uh, on, right. on breaking news kind of and approach. So, uh, I mean, I would really rather, um, uh, if, if government is, is, is out there putting out, and that's what it's doing, I have no problem with what Uhuru is doing. Uru is a politician. Mm -hmm. His work is to try and win the next election. You know, that's what he's trying to do. But when we become part of his band and the media becomes is beating his drum as opposed to holding him to account, as opposed to questioning the things he is telling you. When he goes to uh, uh, Capedo and threatens a community, give me guns or I will do a security operation. When his own uh, minister, uh, Olelenko, did the same thing when he went to Pokot and he told them people will die, you know, his own words. And now his boss is saying pretty much the same thing. We are not following up. The standard reports uh, last week that uh, five kids were killed mm -hmm. in this KDA operation, they've all been erased. You don't read about it anymore mm -hmm. these days. You know, it's all silence. It's all beating against the drum. You know, and this lack of substance means that when we are talking, we always talk in generalities, you know, not in the specifics of the things that are going wrong. So in security, we don't sit down and discuss, actually, let's look at the National Police Service Act. Why hasn't it been implemented? What has not been implemented? Let's drill down to the specifics. We don't. We speak in generalities, mm -hmm. you know, that there should be something called police reform that nobody is too sure what that actually means. Okay. You know. Let's uh, shift the discussion uh, to more politics, I guess. Uh, stay there. <laughs> 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 I was about to shift that I realized, oh no. Um, and the headline today, the standard, the picture here, um, you know, we have this, uh, the deputy president, uh, Raila Odinga, also in the nation, also in the star, pretty much the same picture. So first, the media has time and again you hear Paul say, you guys focus on politics too much. You're always just stuck in politics, politics. That's why I don't watch news anymore. Is that correct to the, significant, the significance of this picture, Clay? I, I think... Right uh, on the front page. <laughs> I, I think, okay, we tend to do that. But I think also it's, um, it's probably because um, uh, or we've, we've come to realize that uh, this is what will sell. Another thing we'll come, we've come to realize... <laughs> so the same people complaining want that? They buy. The same thing that we've realized <laughs> is that... Um, okay. Raila sells on the front page. Raila sells on the front page. So we will try by all means when Raila is lifting a KPL trophy somewhere, all the newspapers <laughs> will have it on the front page. When Raila is sitting with Ruto somewhere, it is not the Ruto that people are putting on the front page, it is Raila. So actually it is like, okay, fine, all oh, these people are reconciled and all that. And I think now the whole thing is, do we ever go past that picture? Mm -hmm. People will pick up the paper and all that, and it will be so happy, oh, Baba, or whoever it is, and all that. But do we ever go, go I mean, after that story? So I think sometimes, like, we do all this, and because the main story there is about the county, county sharing the, <laughs> the formula, mm -hmm. you see? And below, and I'm very sure right now, we are not even discussing that. We are discussing the photo, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that some, sometimes this politics, the politics, they tend to cloud our judgment so much that there are other issues like whatever Gadara was, was pointing out that we don't follow them much. When you look at our weekend papers, or most of the time, all our analysis is about like political analysts, and this politics has given birth to some group of people call political analysts. There's so many, there are a dime a dozen, actually. So I think it's because that is what sells. So for it's because of business. This John. is what sells. Oh. This is, no, this is what Kenyans actually pick up. It is what the readers themselves, it is what, if you have to do a story, try doing a bulletin and do all those social issues. One, the first 
item, second item, third Kuna item, fourth item, the fourth. they will actually, you will start seeing tweets, mm -hmm. how boring the news so is. So is that why then, John, <laughs> we're also seeing mm -hmm. some of the stories roping the media, getting everybody else into the discussion, although their leaders making these sentiments, mm -hmm. 2017 succession, we're already talking about that now, you'll see headlines time and again, oh, this one will succeed, who win the other. Is it all about the money, bottom line? Well, there is an argument for that, and yeah. it's true that there, there are statistics that have shown that certain political figures, Raila included, sell more newspapers than others would. But for me, it's really, it, it comes back to us as, um, uh, as a media, as journalists mm -hmm. in a newsroom. What is it that you're going to put out there, and what impact is it going to have? Are we giving people what they want, or should we be giving people what they need what they need to know. It's okay to, to report on politics. Some of the biggest stories that have come out of Kenya have been political. But it is how these stories have been approached that makes all the difference. For instance, um, Goldenberg, if, I, if, if my memory uh, doesn't fail me, was, was, um, came out of a parliamentary discussion, right? Mm -hmm. And after that, we were able to find out further details of how the government was being built by people within that government of millions and billions of shillings. Mm -hmm. The same happened with Anglo leasing, right? Ten years down the line, we're discussing it, whether that discussion is substantive, really I'll uh, uh, leave other people to judge. But there are, there, are, there are ways in which politics can be used to drive forward agendas that are important to members of the public. But what we do is we report on the politics of the politics, right? Mm -hmm. That Magerer was thrown out of a meeting in the way that he was is now being reported as what as um, good treatment for a spy right okay. <laughs> it doesn't speak to something that very much deeper than that which is what is the moral fabric of our own political parties in dealing with dissent within its own ranks mm. do we just bundle people out like we live in the stone age right or do we within the processes within the laid down procedures of a party kick out Whichever, whichever uh, member is, uh, is, uh, seems to be dissenting or seems to be stealing secrets or whatever. But you'll find that the discussion, even in newsrooms, is that, well, good riddance to bad rubbish. And, and again, just to, 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 to drum home the point about politics versus real issues, the issue of extrajudicial executions I have to come back to. Why is it that nobody, well, few of us, are, are, are reporting this issue in the true context in which it deserves to be reported. Mm. Now that I was right in saying that sometimes we, we report so much in generalities and we report news events as they happen. But here's the thing. If you report a news, uh, a news story without the context, without the, the, the specificity that it deserves, then all it will be in, in the wider scheme of things is this one dangling news item that has nothing else to do with the things that happened before it or the things that will happen after it. We don't create a context and that's why we are, we are being led into, into having an agenda set for us. Yeah, By I, and large this happens and I mean, I mean I sit here as a person who is a practitioner mm -hmm. and but honestly I, I have to express my disappointment yeah. with that. I, I think um, uh, one thing that we need to accept you know whether you like it or not politics does matter. There's no, it's not bad to report on politics. But the way our reporting is done, it seems almost as if our politics has nothing to do with our economics mm -hmm. and nothing to do with the fact that our sports... No, come there. on, it's difficult it's to understand well, economics. It's What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> so, it's easier thing. to understand you know, politics. Um, uh, I, I think uh -huh. in, it's in terms of put, tying the lines that show, you know, uh, or, 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 or making the link, linkages mm -hmm. that demonstrate how our politics undermines, you know, um, uh, ourselves and the real impacts the, that the way we conduct our politics have um, uh, on, on how people get to live their lives. You mm -hmm. know, it's going beyond simply reporting that there's a fight between Ruto and Raila. You know, because that's, that's what why for me that is, picture is a good picture you know, and mm -hmm. it ought to have been used. Why? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ask yourself <laughs> that the whole country thinks that these two guys never talk mm -hmm. and yeah. laugh mm -hmm. at each mm -hmm. other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The country and their supporters have been so polarized uh, to the extent that there are people in who are Raila followers or Ruto followers who think that they can't sit together and laugh like that. Mm -hmm. I think the picture reminds people that the way our politicians go for each other 
that's purely for the camera mm -hmm. out there when they are tearing into each other mm -hmm. at their own moments they go back and they are one this is when they are all attending churches funeral and and they seem happy to chat with each other we saw this happening when they were at uh, governor ruto's place so for me the picture is something to remind kenyans that even when you hold different political positions mm. you're not enemies and, and and it's a good picture to begin reminding that raila and ruto have been more friends in politics than enemies you know when raila joined kanu <laughs> ruto was among the people who are negotiating how he will come in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know when no, you, you, you know you're bringing in history those are hard yes. things those are things that will force us to think <laughs> yes and yeah. the reality is that's what this picture ought to be able to give kenyans i said there is a difficulty in media literacy in the country mm -hmm. not just on economics mm -hmm. even on politics yeah, mm -hmm. I get that, that most of us are not able to read through what we see in the first situation and make informed opinion mm -hmm. we, we tend to ride on a wave without seeing how things things work and these politicians know that they've been riding on that wave mm -hmm. because we are not critical so I, I hear you that what do we do newspapers must sell uh, and, and that's why they are glamour newspapers and and, and and that's why newspapers make a choice mm -hmm. on what is going to keep them in business uh, if a politician is going to keep them in business that's okay but at least on page three Tell us some serious um, things. Yeah, well, <laughs> um, may I say something? Yes. Um, I, I fundamentally d uh, disagree with the idea that uh, uh, a serious news, as we like to call it, is not interesting. Mm. You know? <laughs> um, uh, uh, and I think one of the jobs of actually good journalists is to make what is important interesting. interesting. But you haven't know, they found get, that a balance, know, uh, with, just shortly, uh, with this too, in that you have the counties and the sharing of funds for both mm -hmm. as the written headline, but the picture then is the picture? <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm not sure that that necessarily constitutes balance. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> okay. I, I, I say this. Um, uh, for example, let's take the, the reporting of the stories on, yes. the, on, the, on, the, on the current delegation. We actually did those two stories. They're, 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 they're fairly similar. You know, um, they all speak of how uh, because we have the new um, uh, accounts, uh, uh, audited accounts. Now uh, counties are going to get more money. You know, um, uh, and in fact, I think it's a nation story that says that this actually might undermine uh, a bit about the the governor's pledge. You know, um, very few actually mention that if you look at what the government governors were asking for, yeah, which is 45 percent, what they'd be getting. Is not the 279 that uh, uh, um, the commission is talking about would be actually somewhere around 462 uh, a billion, which is a huge, huge chunk. They didn't really undermine the argument. They will still stand out there and say, well, actually, what we don't want is the discretion of the government to decide what we get, mm -hmm. put it in law, we want that 40%. Don't forget again. Um, Uhuru Kayata and uh, the Jubilee crowd have been parroting how, yes, we are actually giving them 40% uh, of, 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 of the accounts. Will they do that now that we have the new account? Mm -hmm. These are questions that are not being asked, are not being put out there. You know? So it goes back to, to the issue, the whole, whether it's the governor's thing or the OCOA referendum uh, stuff, will be portrayed in our press as a fight between court and jubilee the specifics of those the the substance of that fight you know will be glossed over and the actual impacts and effects that this has you know uh, uh on, on on people and on counties will be glossed over uh, one last thing again in the stories if you look uh, now to kind of be getting what some I mean, is it's the fifth uh, uh, uh highest allocation has gone down from being the second highest it has now gone to Kakamega. This is because they have recalculated how they give it out. You know, are we now looking at what impact that recalculation has, you know, across the board? You know, when we have places like Lamu, which as we saw uh, with Paketoni and the, the other incidents, has real huge problems um, getting the least amount of money that, uh, uh, that we are locating, you know, what is the impact of that? 
you know, what is, uh, um, how does it affect um, our ability to either respond to the crises that are there now, or even future ones, we are building a port, you know, uh, uh, across there, how does that impact it? Mm. So it's us questioning the basis of these figures that I would really love to see the press doing as opposed to simply regurgitating this is what we've been told by government. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So, I, yeah. I, I, I know ignorance, ignorance is not defense, but <laughs> 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 yeah, but sometimes uh, I, I think we don't gloss over these things like deliberately that, okay, fine, I'm going to ignore that and all that. It's because we, we lack understanding. We may not understand, like, right now, um, like, the, the monies that are going to the counties, we will probably um, start parroting or start saying whatever the, the, the politicians in those places will say, or this money, if a politician will say this money is too much, another one will say this money is too little. So there'll probably that argument, that's what we will follow. But actually, we'll not start going deeper and asking, okay, fine, so what are the issues, this amount of money, what are the issues for this county? What are the things that they need to, they need probably to, uh, f the first priority? How much can it cost to set up, to sort out all these things? I think that is what we probably, we probably lack. Uh, 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 Henry calls it uh, media literacy. But I think it's also, it's um, an ignorance on our part. And we also tend to go for the easiest things. We don't want to think. <laughs> low hanging fruit. Yes, <laughs> low hanging fruit. I've seen this uh, even uh, uh, in print that sometimes we say, like, okay, fine, let's follow this story. And somebody tells you, no, I want to follow this. Why? Ah, come on, that story is so difficult to do. Then you get somebody else who does the same story, <laughs> you see. So we, it's, it's a culture that actually is creeping into our newsrooms. Mm. It's, but, it's uh, creeping into our newsrooms. It's creeping in. It's, it's, it's well established. <laughs> 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 you, know, you know, also, there's, there's also something structure, uh, structurally that has happened with the uh, media, and it's not just in Kenya, but it's across the board, mm. in terms of the amount of information that journalists themselves have to deal with on a daily basis, makes it very difficult for them to judge which one they should invest more in mm. in terms of being able to get better understanding and better depth of because what has happened is that with the proliferation of in information on the internet and other and other mediums um, people feel like they have to cover all bases in every in one newspaper mm -hmm. I think it, it, it's about time that we start to like like Adara said again drill down on what specific issues we want to pursue mm. because there will be this 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 information and there has to be there's an onus that is placed on members of the public to also um, consume that information that is out there and not just depend on on the media itself it, uh, at least to my understanding and with the issues that we choose to pick up on we need to be as focused and as serious with them as any other analyst would be that way at least on a number of issues, we'll be able to give clarity, we'll be able to give direction and set the yeah. agenda. Okay, and one of the stories we have not given clarity, perhaps <laughs> we could, mm -hmm. is this tetanus job story. The Catholic <sighs> Church has been on and on, <laughs> and good that they have said not to let it go. Coopert has joined in now, uh, but we've simply just been covering it and saying the government says this is purely tetanus. Then we say, no, the Catholic Church says, no, there's a um, fertility element to it. Uh, can the media not what get services of a doctor to check out these things and then now come and say now this is now what we have also well, 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 finding. Well, yes. to be fair to be well. fair on checkpoint a couple of weeks ago Yvonne yeah. hosted a panel with uh, doctors who were involved in the okay. developing of this of this vaccine as well as a lawyer representing uh, the Catholic Church to have that discussion whether it went as deep as it should perhaps is is is, is a question that we we all need to answer mm -hmm. but yes again there is a, a because they discussed here, it, but we have results of here's the thing. Yeah, I mean, the media did you, yes, did you watch it yesterday? Yeah. 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 What are the funniest things? So yesterday, mm -hmm. is for the first time we have these guys who conducted the test on behalf of the Catholic Church come up and say, "Ah, no, actually, those were the correct tests." Mm -hmm. Sorry, those <laughs> were not the correct. Yeah, tests? that actually the, the I mean the the way the samples were given. They say they tested it as if it's a human mm. uh, 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 human <laughs> tissue, and it is not. Uh, you need other tests to confirm what the, the Catholics are saying. It's taken us what three weeks, four mm. weeks, so to actually discover it, this. 
you know, so, so there are questions I think to be asked about, and it's not just in Kenya that this vaccination is going mm, on. There, I, I hear Venezuela, the, the church Brazil. guy um, uh, who was in front of parliament yesterday say, why well, are they targeting 14 to 49 year olds? Well, actually the policies for neonatal yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, vaccinations, you know, who do you want to target? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, okay, okay but, but there's also another aspect to this story like okay fine so we have to question like how good are our testing systems or, or laboratories mm -hmm. you know because all this time this thing could have been tested I think there was a this one time one time you hosted people from Lancet I think they're the ones who probably did Lancet laboratories yeah it's a CEO who was on yesterday yeah, yeah then it, for somebody to say that yes we did not know how we tested it you know it it brings in well, no, no, he did, other he questions. Say, what, what he said it brings in other questions, but it also brings another aspect uh -huh. of communication, government communication. Uh -huh. The director of medical services said the other day that yes, this HCG is there, but in a dormant form. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah. So you see. It will not so, so actually, <laughs> by now, I think yeah. by now, what should have, what at least even if media, media, media houses could have probably come together and said, okay, fine, we're taking over this cost, let's get this thing and pay to get it tested the same way we probably mm. pay fixers or uh, pay, I mean, or pay yeah. pay for investigative stories or mm -hmm. let's come together and do this and give Kenyans. Yeah, Henry? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's what I think the, it, it, it's the true test of, of journalism that um, perhaps uh, media houses are not investing enough uh, in terms of resources, uh, financial resources and human capacity because other media houses would have had perhaps uh, staffers who are highly regarded scientists who oh, would, oh, we would do, be we able do. We have to Joy, do that. Joy Wanja. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and, and I use the word highly regarded because <laughs> uh, then if you have any, they would then have been able to say from our tests, this is what is happening. Mm. But, but two, they would also have perhaps opened up the discussion prior to uh, the vaccination processes uh, round one beginning mm -hmm. and, and say this is going to take off. These are the 10 issues that are being raised by stakeholders. Could we have specific responses from both sides? I know that, say, Dr. Stephen Karanja, who works for uh, the, the Catholics, is, has a position on reproductive health. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as a country, again, we need to first understand that, that because the Catholic Church is clear on its stance on issues of contraceptives, mm -hmm. then that may in a way perhaps blur even their testing system mm -hmm. on anything they think could have an effect on, on, on reproductive health. Mm -hmm. But having said that, we also need independence uh, and, and for me, one, this is where the government has failed to communicate. Uh, uh, and, and it is an example. We see that they've come to communicate about Ebola after WHO has said, oh, Kenya is still a country at risk. Then no. that is when they've rolled out. No, and after, uh, and after okay. we made noise here. Yeah. And two, you would <laughs> see that these vaccinations have gone on, but there isn't sufficient communication. So my argument would be that the time we are taking to give to president uh, going around Kibera <laughs> and the others. Perhaps that's time we could have invested more onto these real issues that are going to affect Kenyans um, on, on either side. So okay. it, media yeah. has time, mm. but it is just who they are allocating it to I think and just, the issues they are just allocating. A, just a rider to that, I think the reason why sometimes we are surprised uh, by stories as we were with this one on Tetanus is, mm. is for the reason that um, we don't give our journalists enough of an opportunity to invest in working their sources and being on the crest of, of new information. Mm -hmm. If we had a person who was, and, and we do, actually what, what, what the problem is that we place a bit too much of significance on what is happening in the political sphere as opposed to these other stories which are important. So you'd have a journalist who actually has a good lead on what's happening um, with respect to, to this virus and that sort of thing. But it's not really looked upon as a story that is interesting or will capture attention as quickly as uh, perhaps a statement from uh, some podium about uh, the politics of the day. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this is something that, that used to happen in newsrooms, but is, is, is not happening as much as it should anymore. Um, the reason why I used to enjoy uh, papers on Saturdays, 
both a standard and a nation was that I could always expect that there'd be an agenda setting piece either on health or on society mm -hmm. that really has invested in um, oh, no, start picking standard on Sunday it's got that all right yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. But that's why I enjoyed the papers on the weekend because mm -hmm. there, there'll always be this piece that that really wakes you up to something that's happening that that wasn't covered during the week. We need, I think, uh, as as a media to be more investigative and also invest in our own journalists' capacity to go out and seek this information. I don't think that newsrooms didn't know this. I think that they did. It's just that the priority that was given to it was was not as high as, uh, for instance, the the drama, w which is fair, the drama of Magarer being, you know, thrown out on his ear <laughs> and jumping into, into a police car, you yes. know? And yeah, it so. has been deflated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, finally, we must talk about this before we go very shortly. Um, uh, the CS lands and NLC chairs, so pretty much some would say paraded by the president and each you're told to go out and say how things are now good and they say that um, in terms of their working relations that have uh, been acrimonious for the past over one year. Uh, but do we know what the deal is? As the media we reported, yes, they've buried the hatchet. It's all good, uh, perhaps going forward. And even said, you know, this was after the Supreme Court directed that they go seek a solution. So we said all that, but do we know what it is the two have decided, the two sides, and also what will uh, keep them from going at it again, Gadara? I mean, for me, the, the, the issue even goes beyond what they agreed. When did the National Lands Commission stop being an independent commission? When did it start being dictated to by the government, by the president? You know, remember the issue with the Lamo titles? When he <coughs> goes, he, uh, uh, the president first announces his uh, 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 they're, they're all invalid, and then summons uh, 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 Swazuri, mm -hmm. who then comes out saying, "Well, actually, before they've even sent people to the ground there, we have agreed that this, those are going to be rescinded." Here's my question: You know, why aren't we looking at how these independent commissions are being made less independent? You know, are being made to count out what government does? Yes. I mean, uh, the president is well within his right to summon his uh, uh, his subordinate, who is, I mean, his his, uh, his worker, uh -huh. who is Charity Tingilu. What's he doing summoning uh, Swazuri? You know, Swazuri so doesn't work for the president. You know, and we have to be careful because once we start blurring these lines of independence, you know, it's a very short step to reintroducing the overwhelming the uh, imperial presidency, okay. you know, which we were trying to run away from in the first place when we changed the constitution. Briefly, Henry? Two things there. Lack of access to information. Mm -hmm. That <sighs> states' bodies continue to tell us what they want us to hear. Mm -hmm. um, what has been the difference between uh, Cabinet as Secretary and National Land Commission is an issue of interpreting the law because the law has existed and the law clearly spells out their mandate. But they've been ambivalent interpretation of what that law requires of the two offices. So when we are told now they've buried the hatchet and they are willing to work together, one, it could be taken simplistically to say they are all agreeing they will work within the law. So we don't need extra information. But two, that they've been gray areas of the law and that they are proposing changes to the law that would clearly demarcate mm. their functions. And we ought now to see what those proposals are. And they have to be discussed by Kenyans to say, are you watering down functions of one agency, perhaps to leverage on the other? Mm -hmm. Because that discussion hasn't happened, the photo session of the four of them, because the deputy <laughs> president, president, yeah, yeah. charity, <laughs> and Swazuri is a nice thing. But it's going to come out when we discover the title deeds they gave in some region are not right, or they were not signed by the requisite officer. And then we will go back to that cycle again. We're going to find out that we've been told current land uh, documents are not in the registry. But that is what Ngilu was 
closing the yeah. registry <laughs> to ensure that they are there. Mm. So are we, why are we not going back to that substance to see what have you agreed on? So I still think that we are at a point when the president has to move with speed to ensure that there is more access to information mm -hmm. than just the hoopla around what they are doing. Okay. And Kenyans must continue to ask for that information so that we are engaging in this discussion from a point of, of information as opposed to being riders. Mm -hmm. just, just very, very quickly. Um, uh, uh, on one thing is just said, the president will not move at speed to ensure there is information because it is not, not in, in his interest, interest. <laughs> for us to have information. He has to, which is actually he has up to live to by us. the constitution, at least yeah. that's what yeah. he says. But it's up to us to ensure, to enforce that. It's up yeah. to the media to be asking for information, not to wait to be mm -hmm. given it. Or ask those questions quickly. True, I mean, I, I have to agree with them. It's really up to us to be able to fight for the, the, the right to, to access this information. It's been given to us constitutionally, but I don't think we are exercising that right enough as media right. um, the the details of this deal was it a gentleman's agreement was there something actually written down and what implications do those have with respect to land adjudication uh, going forward uh, the, the the point that Hen Henry makes about about uh, the Karen land saga as well as some of the, the land that Uhuru Kenyatta is supposed to own mm -hmm. just speaks to the fact that we really don't understand what's going on in there and as as media and as journalists we, we need to be a bit more um, demanding of, of that right uh, okay. to information. Finally, Clay. Uh, I have to remind you that Mr. Kenyatta does not own land. Eh? Mm. It was discovered that eh? <laughs> after. <laughs> anyway, uh, back to this thing. I mean, like, they buried the hatchet. Eh? Yes. It brings Deep. me back to one thing. Where did Freedom they of access to information act. We will have to push for this thing mm. to go through. And then we don't even know where the hatchet. We didn't. We didn't see the hatchet before it was buried <laughs> in the first place. You know. <laughs> so I, th I think th there are very many questions that need to be asked and all okay. that. What were they fighting over in the first place? Monday, whose role starts when? Yeah, but you see, we don't know because we've refused to understand. Like, what are the who's to yeah. run And then also, like right now, can we demand? The, whatever it is that they signed this, this time, or can we demand and say we want to see that hatchet and where it was buried? In law, you can. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, but you see, in a question. Yeah, but you okay. see, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, if it could have been easier if at all we had this freedom of access to information uh, bill or whatever it is passed, and that's what we are actually at a crossroad. We are not moving forward completely as a media to make this thing happen. All right, let's go back to the newsroom and try and deal with all those things you've raised. <laughs> Claire Muganda, uh, features editor, Standard Standard, John Alanamo, special projects editor, Henry Miner, regional director, Article 19, Eastern Africa, and Patrick Gadara, who's a communication consultant. Thank you, gentlemen, for being with us uh, this morning. Great discussion. And I guess the most important thing to leave this with for the journalists that will remain here is perhaps next week we'll have a different conversation on some of these areas in terms of progress. That we'll have found do. the hatchet. We'll have found the hatchet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that Excellent. That's the newsroom for you this morning, 8.32 a.m. We take a short break. When we return, we are getting up close and personal matters, politics and family with the Honorable Joyce Slay, who is the woman representative, Taita Tavita. Stay with us.